What's up guys? Zach Hample here at Fenway Park for the second straight day. And can you guess what the next two words out of my mouth will be? Jackson Holiday. Yeah. Yesterday I saw him make his MLB debut. He went 0 for 4. And I'm still hoping that I will catch his very first Major League home run. So we'll see what he does today. Really crappy weather. It's been raining on and off. So I don't even know if there's batting practice. My guess is... No, but we'll see. And as always, I'm here nice and early, so let's head on inside. They're taking BP, or they're going too soon. So I was feeling great at this point, and so was that player with the hood up for the Red Sox. You can see these guys were looking on. There was some action in the bullpen. Michael Brenly, the bullpen catcher, feeding some balls there and standing up. Well, that's Jason Varitek giving some advice. And look at that, not all of the balls were official balls. And so I was just standing around there in the walkway, waiting for BP to start, and eventually it happened. And you know, the previous day I saw both teams hit and really struggled to catch baseballs. So I was hoping to have a much bigger day. And in just a moment, we're gonna freeze it right here. That player is Brennan Bernardino. And the camera's a little shaky here. There were people in the walkway in the way, but look at this, he threw it to me, so that felt good. Always nice to get the first one out of the way. That fan in the yellow jersey was happy for me. And as you see some players making plays in the outfield, I noticed that there were a whole bunch of righties taking their cuts, and so I decided to make some moves and head up to the Green Monster. Well, that was a whole lot of fun catching a home run on the Green Monster. Really glad that I made the decision to come up here. And not long after that happened, the Red Sox wrapped up their first group of BP. And so, I see a lefty up there right now. If this whole group is lefties, I don't know if I'm going to stay, but, you know, we'll just see who's jumping in and out of the cage. And that is a wrap on Red Sox batting practice for today, and it was much better than yesterday when I only got one baseball in two groups from the Sox. Today I got four, so feeling much better about that. And if you listen, yeah, there's nothing. No music, they'll probably start playing the organ in just a bit, so I'm enjoying this chillness while it lasts. The Orioles are starting to get loose, so I guess they're gonna be taking BP2, which is surprising and wonderful on this cold, damp day that both teams are gonna hit, so we'll see how many more balls I can snag. Coach Sanders, what up? Thank you. Well, that's always interesting to get a baseball without asking for it. 
Where's that one? Uh, just watch the gate. I, I did ask him for a ball over toward the foul pole, and he ignored me, and then just hooked it up. So that's number five. I got it. I got it. Oh. Go Dean. Oh, see that lefty toss. Thank you. Oh. Dean Kramer throwing left-handed. And for the young dude, you want this one? not get a shot of this one, but it was tossed by Tim Cousins, who, as I mentioned, is the nicest. You want this to give to a kid later on? Yeah, First base coach Anthony Sanders loves hitting fungos to fans. If you saw my recent Pirates videos, then you saw that he hit one to me in the left field there. He tried again today when I was deep in center field. His aim was slightly off and I got slightly caught up on the end of a seat. But he hit a fungo to someone else on top of the green monster and then tipped his cap in celebration. So that was pretty fun. The Orioles are such a cool team. I keep saying it because it keeps being true. So I love seeing them any chance I get. And of course, Camden Yards is a fun place to be. And so today, I did much better than yesterday. I quadrupled my output from batting practice yesterday. When I got two balls, today I got eight. So I'm feeling great about that. And I gotta get this guy in the video, my friend Mike, who helped orchestrate the helicopter stunt years ago. Check the description and I'll throw a link to that video when I set a world record by catching a baseball drop from 1,050 feet high. And so right now we are in the lull between batting practice and the game. It just got louder here. They switched off the organ music. They're playing some other random something. Here they go with the advertisements. But anyway, Jackson Holiday, baby. It's uh, about 40 minutes till game time, so. Uh, just getting in that zone. I hope my luck for the game continues my luck from BP today because it was great, so we'll see.
check this out. There were so many fans pre-game that wanted to say hello to me and get selfies that I decided to speed up the footage so we could get a whole bunch of them in there. Many thanks to these guys for the good vibes. And you'll see right here that Gunnar Henderson led off the game with a pop-up to shortstop and just listen to what one of the fans yelled. Yeah, I'm not getting that one. I can't be everywhere. That is David Hamilton, number 70, making the play. And for the record, my seats were not in center field. I was only out there to visit some friends with seats there at the start of the game, but I figured as the rain started coming down, well, I'll hang out here just for a bit, enjoy the view, but my plan was to be in right field for Jackson Holiday. That's where my seat was. As you can see, Masataka Yoshida driving in a run with a ground out that put the socks on top, one nothing in the bottom of the first. So this is Jaron Duran throwing his warm-up ball and watch people die inside. Yep, that's one of my favorite subreddits. But anyway, you can see he retrieved the ball, gave the same fan another chance, he caught it, and then, well, it's kind of hard to see, but he handed it to a kid, so everybody was happy. And after Jordan Westberg struck out to end the top of the second, I said goodbye to my friends and headed to my seat in right field. Yeah, not what I wanted to see. Jackson Holiday is now over five in the big leagues, but as the pitch comes in to Anthony Santander, I will say that Jackson did hit that baseball right at me, just on the ground instead of, you know, a 410 foot fly ball. Like I said at the start of the day, crappy weather here in Boston, and it is really coming down. And this dude right here, well, that's the head groundskeeper. He was just chatting with the umps about the weather situation, probably showing them the radar and telling them what to expect. And so fourth inning right now, socks are up two to nothing. And, you know, I have a lot of space in this walkway if anybody hits a home run, but hitting on a night like tonight is tough. You want this? Thank you. All right. So guess what? Jackson Holiday was not the only player tonight going for his first career homer. This dude connecting right here, well, that's Colton Kowser going guard for the very first time. And unfortunately for me, he went oppo for a little green monster action. And then, also unfortunately, Mr. Holiday struck out and on that play, Jordan Westberg stole second base, but he got stranded there. And so, as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning right now, Sox are on top, two to one, and uh, that's all I have to say. I'm very cold, and I am, as always, ready. Thank you for the ball.
Thank you. Man, the Orioles are unbelievably generous. That was Ben Carhart hooking it up right there, the bullpen catcher. And that was my 10th baseball of the day. Double digits. And by the way, right now bottom seven, Sox are still holding on to a two to one lead. This is definitely the first time that I can remember ever signing Cotton Candy. Here you go. It seems that every game the Orioles play gets crazy at the end, and I have a lot to say about this one, so get ready for it. Tonight, in the top of the eighth inning, Jackson Holiday slashed a ground ball to third base and ended up reaching base on an error by Pablo Reyes. And then three batters later, Anthony Santander hooked a 332-foot home run down the right field line just inside the pesky pole. And man, Orioles fans were fired up at that point because their team suddenly had a one-run lead, but it did not last long. Bottom of the eighth, well, Connor Wong launched a solo homer over the Green Monster and into the Boston Knight, so that tied the game. And of course, this place went nuts. And what a scene with the stadium lights flashing and thick mist floating around. That was pretty damn cool, but okay, back to business. Boston's bullpen was active after that, with Kenley Jansen and his 423 career saves getting loose. And there was some big time suspense just a few minutes later with Jackson Holiday at bat, with two outs, and two strikes, and two runners on base. And I was just like, OMG at that point. And I am sorry to say that Jackson went down swinging on some high cheese. And you know, speaking of guys who throw hard and have over 400 career saves, it was Craig Kimbrell's time to shine. And of course, this was not a save situation, but he did his thing and set down the socks in order. And as an added bonus for the fans, Reese McGuire got ejected after getting called out on strikes. So yeah, it was indeed that kind of night. And in the top of the 10th, Gunnar Henderson crushed a two run bomb over the monster. And you know, it was not just the fans who were excited. Bullpen catcher Ben Carhart was also quite pleased by this turn of events. And that was just the beginning of a six-run outburst, which included Colton Kowser's second home run of the night, which went directly over my head. And as I was climbing over the rows to get closer to it, it shot past me on the ground underneath the seats and ended up right in the walkway where I had originally been. So you can imagine how annoyed I was after that. But hey, happens. And finally, in the bottom of the 10th, the Red Sox managed to push one lonely run across the plate. And that was it. This game finally ended on a weak bouncer to first base, making a winner of the Orioles and Craig Kimbrell. My, oh my, what a night here at Fenway. It seems like this game had it all. Well, you know, minus a home run by Jackson Holiday, or even a base hit from the young man, who's now 0 for 8 to start his big league career. But to his credit, he did score his first two runs tonight. Nine to four, that was the final, and I am glad this game did not last any longer because I personally have a long night ahead of me. So I'll tell you about that quickly while I wrap up this video in this unceremonious parking lot, just a block from Fenway Park, which you can see right there. First, 10 baseballs today, double digits for the first time this season. So that feels great including the balls that I gave away. That brings my lifetime total to 12,455. And yesterday I shouted out this charity, Pitch In For Baseball and Softball. They provide equipment to kids all over the world to help them play ball. Every baseball that I snag raises money for them. So this was a great day for the charity. Check the description. I'll throw a link there to my fundraiser. Donate some money, help kids, and you could win some really cool prizes. And right now, I have to drive back to New York. So I'm gonna be up very, very late. I wish that I could keep following the Orioles and Jackson Holiday and try to catch his first home run. But like an idiot, I made some non-baseball plans in New York City, and I already have another trip booked to Tampa to see Mike Trout. So I'm hoping to see Jackson again soon. You know, I'm not gonna root against him to not hit the home run, but if he does wanna wait for me, I won't complain. Anyway, um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'm out.